Hello and welcome to another edition of Cracking the Cryptic where we're looking at these ultra fiendish puzzles uh, that were published on Wednesday to commemorate the Times' 10,000th Sudoku. Now, um, I solved one of these the other day. It was brutally difficult. It involved an X-Wing and then a Swordfish. And some of you may have looked at Mark's video where he shows you his technique for solving both of these puzzles. And his time for solving this puzzle was was pretty astoundingly quick. He solved it in four minutes, four seconds. Um, and the way he did that was by, he got to this point, um, so exactly what you have uh, in front of you uh, on the video, and then he guessed, he guessed this cell here on the basis that he could see that if this cell was, um, I think he guessed this cell was a 1, because he could see that if it wasn't a 1, then he would get this cell to be a 1, and that would give him a 7 and a 6. So it would give him several numbers in the event that this turned out to be an incorrect guess. And from there, the solution fl flowed quite quickly. So I thought what might be interesting is to take a look at this sort of starting point, and rather than guess, see whether there's a, a logical way of making progress. And the interesting thing about this is there is there's actually a very simple way of making progress here. Um, it doesn't require guessing at all. Um, it just requires a little bit of studying the grid. And if you do that, you can see that this cell here um, can only be a 4. So if we look along this, uh, this row, for example, we can see we need 1, 4, 5 and 9. Uh, to complete this row and we have a 1 and a 9 in the column already and a 5 in the box so so actually we could write in this as being a 4 very quickly and you can see that's very useful because that immediately would allow us uh, I've notated the grid as well so the small numbers as usual in the puzzles that we look at on cracking the cryptic um, uh, are showing uh, where a number can only go in two places within a 3x3 three three box. So I know immediately here I can write in a 4 here and an 8, just straight off the bat. Um, and that in turn will allow me, now there's only one place an 8 can go in this 3x3 three three box, so I can go 8 and 9 and 8 and 9 there. So that's all just as a result of spotting this this four that was sort of it was a naked four, but it was reasonably hard to see. Let's just tidy up the notation now and think about how we might make progress from this position. Um, so okay. Now, yeah, there is a way of making progress here that isn't too difficult. And it's using exactly the, these new numbers we've got. So now you can see, I think, that we can, in the central 3x3 three three box, we can notate 9s into these two positions. And we can notate 8s into these two positions. And we can say that 4s have to go in one of these two positions. And now the critical thing is probably to realize that. Now let's look at ones and where ones can go in this box. You can see we have a one checking these three cells and this one here checking these three cells. So I'm going to break with my notation here just to illustrate the point. But I know now that a one goes in one of those four positions. And why is that so important? Well, it's so important because I now have four cells in this 3x3 three three box and exactly four unknowns. So I know that the numbers 1, 4, 8 and 9 fill these boxes somehow uh, and therefore the, the rest of the numbers have to go outside of this little square here, this little 2x2 two two square. Um, and I think there are probably a variety of ways of using this, this feature to make more progress, but the most obvious one would be to look again at row 3 here, where we have to place 1, 5 and 9, and if we actually think about what numbers can go in this box, it's only a 1 and a 9. So there, we've now got a 1, 9 double um, in this cell here and this cell here, so what number can go in this cell? Well, a 1 can no longer go in this cell, because we know that the 1 will either be here or here in column 5. So this cannot be a 1, 
therefore this cell here will have to be an 8. Um, now I'm not certain that's going to be enough to finish the puzzle but it's certainly it's going to give us another number or two. Um, you can see now we need 5 and 7 to finish off this, this row so I think actually that is going to be it. Now the 5 has to go here, this has to be a 7 and we can make lots more progress again. That's going to resolve this 7, a 7 and 9 gives us a 7 and a 5 here and so actually no swordfishes, no x-wings required here, just a bit of diligent notation and spotting this, this sort of quadruple in the central 3x3 three three box. So Mark was much closer than he might have thought actually to, to finding a logical answer. Um, but having said that, I still don't think um, even if he'd known about this four, well maybe maybe it would have been as quick as his four minutes, four seconds solved, but perhaps not. Um, there's definitely a lesson here about the speed of guessing when it comes to speed solving Sudoku. So anyway, I thought we'd, uh, uh, we'd just do a video to show that. And we'll be back soon with another Sudoku. I think Mark has a crossword video for tomorrow as well. So I hope you're enjoying the videos. If you are, please subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.